September jobs report upsets the stock market. And which possible critical point, October 7, 9.05 a.m. Eastern Time. You're looking at a chart of the um, jobs created during uh, September. And you can see it went to a new high for the year. It's gone to a new high since the virus pandemic recession. Um, basically, we have more jobs than ever, okay? Now we move over to the unemployment rate. And whoops, this is the wrong one. Hold my wheel back here. There we go, unemployment rate. We can see it actually ticked up a little bit going into August that excited people that were cooling off the economy, cooling off uh, hiring people, and then it tips down for September to as low as it was in July. It's now at 3.5%, which is, my my opinion, full employment but it can go lower, things can get better. Well, this has upset uh, the stock market, and we have seen the stock market off as much as 54 points here this morning, and we have an open for the day session. Now, opening this low means it's attacking, filling the gap made earlier this week, at least trying for it. The model suggesting that even though we must allow for a level four bottom this morning, is now suggesting with this information there can be lingering selling momentum here uh, could be sluggish trade at least if not all right decline and it's probably not going to bottom to 1 p.m eastern time and later and it does not have to bottom to start of monday's day session or it's possible the futures bottom late or i'm sorry the cash market bottoms late today but the futures a little weak sunday night and then by monday it picks its head up the market will likely pick its head up on monday and that seems to be high probability, high confidence. The key is, is it down all day today? Is it down for a while, then up? We don't know. We just know we're coming near a level four bottom. We understand this weakness because of the shock on the jobs report. Why is it, a, and I don't know if this is truly a shock, but why is it upsetting at least the futures market traders? And the answer is that we saw the jolts report earlier this week showing that businesses took away more than a million jobs, just canceled them, wiped them out. Well, today we get an idea that we actually added 263,000 jobs in September. Those are real jobs. So you subtract that from that drop of over a million. And yes, it's still a sizable amount that businesses have canceled, but the point is, 263,000 was a strong jobs report. We converted some of those jo uh, potential jobs to real jobs. The thing is, the market is keyed in now that, hey, we probably have won the war on inflation when it comes to commodities, input costs, fixing supply chains, those kind of things. But we have not won the war on inflation in a sense of cooling off what we're paying people and how many jobs we're creating. And there's this fear that the Federal Reserve is just gonna ignore all the other factors in the economy and they're gonna keep pounding rates higher until they hurt jobs creation. But that could cause an overreaction so that we hurt the economy more than necessary for the war inflation so it scares investors, businesses, and so they're selling the stocks. So where are we going this morning here before the open? Well, as I warned you, it, I was a bit shocked and surprised here that they bought as well as they did on Monday and Tuesday and spilling over a bit, okay? And this is the S&P 500 futures, by the way. And notice it did come down and respect our minimum downside target, then drop to the middle target for the critical point, which is always the best target if we're gonna pick one price of the three. And notice it bottomed right there. Extremely accurate. And notice how well they rallied. It, that price level meant something to them. This range of price meant something to them. All right, now we'll have to see today whether they're just going to put it back to those levels or even to a new low for the year. Because the thing is, Monday's low in the futures, Friday's low in the cash market was really not at the right timing for the more important level three bottom signal or buy signal for a month, intramonth, and for the level two and perhaps level one and long term also do. It wasn't quite right, and yet they rallied it enough. Well, now I can see I've messed that up. Uh, they've rallied enough to uh, consider a bottom's in place. 
And that's why the model gave up and said, must be we missed it somehow. Doesn't make the sense we'd like, but we think we can figure it out. Well, now the thing is they're driving it down now off of this jobs report. This may be the bearish news we need to maybe pull it all the way back down into a new low for the year now into next week. Maybe it's not going to rally that well going into the October 13th report on Thursday next week. Um, interest rates are moving higher because of this report. That's bothering the stock market, okay? But I'm also suspicious that I wonder if we're going to create some kind of head and shoulders pattern. This is the shoulder. This is the head. This is the shoulder. It's kind of like a triple bottom, okay? I wonder if it really will go to a new low for the year. And I wonder if they will put the brakes on and say, well, we still want to wait and see what that inflation report is. They may not rally that well now into the inflation report, but if we could get a bullish report, we could look back saying that jobs report was one of the last of like very bearish news, okay, and kind of flush things out. And the market is oversold intraday wise, suggesting it really shouldn't go down that much. But we do have to watch out for this gap filling, this retracement. We also have to watch out that they may want to just pound this up. So I realize I've been using price levels to watch to be bullish. We had one here and here, and we we got it, but we didn't get it the way we wanted. We wanted positive closes. Didn't get it on the futures. I think we did get it barely on the cash, and it didn't work. And then we did get positive closes taking out that. That is a bullish signal. We think this market still wants to bounce by next week and then may top because of a bearish inflation report or may continue beyond it for a little while for the level three because we get a bullish inflation report. We don't know yet, okay? So we think this is a sign that the market's going to be rather limited. They got a little scare going on this morning and then it's going to stabilize and move higher. And what we're thinking is if we had it right that really this low right there is not level three, can't be a level two or larger, long term, more important than the point is today. OK, and more likely 1 p.m. and later today into next week is the better time for that level two bottom. OK, so the point is it could, it could be quite important. There's still an opportunity to get a bullish inflation report and for this market to be bullish for the rest of the year even. But we also know of the risk that it may actually be bearish into sometime November and then turn bullish on into next year. So still things can go wrong here for the bullish scenario. Maybe we've got one right now. But the point is this might be um, a decent uh, chance for a bottom here even off of this, uh, this news here in the jobs report. Now here's the hourly daily chart and we do have critical point objectives to extend this downtrend into this gap zone. We can move this up and use the high of this week and then bring it down to this breakdown level and it will fill all of the gap or a little lower. And some people will use a retracement for this run up and they use that low and they'll say, well heck you can bring it all the way back down. Okay. But the hourly chart was quite oversold, so it means we might have just a little bit of panic selling this morning, and then the market stabilizes. I think we have to consider if we'll fill this gap and then starts turning up, they're getting over the jobs report news, and they're still going to want to try to play the upside a little bit next week. I don't think they're going to play it as well as they've done from June through September, because they've been burned off of putting the market up quite a bit into an inflation report because inflation reports generally have been bearish to quite bearish okay for the stock market so i'm not convinced they're going to rally it much next week and this jobs report probably takes away the upside but at the same time i'm wondering if this jobs report isn't just going to create a pullback to this range and the next thing we know it rallies up we might even be looking at a ready set go pattern where this is ready this is set and then when it finally goes through to a new high for the week, and it may not do it the next week, maybe we got an entry level for anybody that wants to be more bullish, especially if we can get a bullish inflation report. So bottom line is jobs reports bearish. The futures are coming down. They can fill this gap here made this week. Maybe they can go lower. Maybe they're going to be down all day. But they're also going to create a gap right in here. And the market's going to have to pick its head up too. So it just depends how bearish they they are 
and it's going to be touch and go and iffy but I think as long as they actually will move this uh, let me double check we're down 48 49 right now so um, we should get a gap in and the cash side this is the futures so I think they can pull it down a little bit more and then if it can be rallying later today if it rallies early next week they're trying to put it up to level three and then if we get a bearish inflation report we're going to have problems for weeks <laughs> okay but if we get a bullish inflation report then they're going to say hey maybe we finally have, have created a milestone here or seen uh, a milestone moment all right that's the best i've got for you here uh be cautious be careful they don't like the jobs report they assume that means higher uh, interest rates coming here and here's our daily chart on the 10-year uh, note and you can see it's moved up quite a bit and it's trying to move back up to the high and the bond market's thinking my gosh we may have to go well above four percent after all uh, going into November when the Federal Reserve raises its rate because it's liable to do a three-quarters point raise slam it right to four percent that puts the 10-year at four and a half to over five stock market's not going to like it we may have problems into November here, no question about it. But it also, I'm kind of thinking, what if we get a what if we get a bullish inflation jobs report? But again, they're probably not going to worry too much about the inflation report today. They have to worry about this jobs report and the rising interest rates. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. Thank you.